votes, it's really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Hi there, this is Seriously Speaking, and my name is Adesuwa Onyenokwe. It is said, at least it was William Shakespeare that said that some people are born great. Some people achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. In recent times in our country, Nigeria, the reality shows and the beauty pageants has thrust some form of greatness on people who have turned to be celebrities. We adore them, we watch what they do, but I'm wondering, Amongst those celebrities that we all love, there are some of them who've chosen to take that greatness and make it a responsibility to help to change society. That's what we're talking about today. What do you do with greatness? I have three celebrities in the house today who, when they were born, I'm sure they didn't realize that they would be where they are today, but they're not just sitting there. They're doing something with it. You'll meet those guests in a short while if you don't go away. This is Seriously Speaking. My primary medium is television. I love television. I also facilitate conversations between people and companies. I have to research my subjects, the people I'm going to talk with, the people I'm going to be with. My IT guru said to me, we have to switch you to a tisselat. I said, why? He said, for roaming, for sense. I haven't regretted it for a second. I get into a new country, automatically I'm switched on. And you know the best part? I don't have to pay for all the incoming calls. There's a young lady that I've recently heard about. She's a fashion designer. Not only has she pulled herself from the most incredible odds, she's also been awarded internationally. That is the kind of person I'll fly to go talk with wherever it is she is in the world. I'll tell you a secret. My former network, I was with them from inception. I switch only because I found a better partner. Switch it to quality today. FT Salat, now you're talking. Yes, welcome back. It's often said that the first impression you make lasts longer. And my guests on this show today got their first chance, like many others, not on a platter of gold, because if you have to perform at those reality shows, it can be tough. But today, that chance they got has helped them fulfill a higher calling. And I define them as celebrities who celebrate others with their voice, the beauty, or music. And the first person I have has just released one great song he calls Broken. And this song is specifically to try and raise awareness and help people who are displaced in our society. And I would take that video very briefly before I bring the young man who calls himself Lamborghini. See me when I come, see me when I leave naked in the coffin. Put me in the earth and I'm nothing. Give me peace when I'm 95, give me love when I'm 100, but give me cash when I'm 13. Is it come, is it go? But we all know that the world only wants to go where the cash flow. Inevitably, destiny calls, we can never have it all. We just take a walk down the corridor. I'm living on the wild hand side, poverty and disease and death in sight. The kings of the kingdom, the keys of wisdom, locked in a vault outside. This world's not gonna end, at least not in a thousand years. It's time to be good to it. Every hate, every war, every pandemic. Every child abused in any continent. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy on your children, children. I. Oh, Lord, have mercy on your children, children. Say, say, say. Man, I go live a bread alone. Man, I go live a fish alone. Too many evil happening. See them, boys, and kill them. World from a get a fin of all, man, a seat and open. All guy. Violence 
fast enough, they get it fast enough. We keep on blaming other people as the causes of the reasons that we're giving up. Beginning to get tired in the tides in the circle and around we go. I get it, we're inspired by fear. We're living in the darkness, and that means that every shadow we see as a dark trick to further prove it. They get to call us the dark continent. So much land, so we could plant seeds of destruction. Violence gives spread to violence. And then we get to ask the question, why this? Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> what did you think when I asked that you should come and join me on the show to do this? You remember we met on, on radio, on radio set? Yeah, we several met on months radio. Ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, the first thing that came to my mind is, um, okay, uh, let me just go and see what this is all about. <laughs> because you know what I mean? Celebrities are not shy. You know, when you invite people sometimes, they are worried about television. But as a celebrity, you're not shy, no, are you? Of, no. You're used I'm, to audiences and crowds yeah, and things like that. On different platforms. Okay, why? What, we just watched Broken. Yeah. How long did it take you to put that song together? And why did you put that song together, really? Okay, um, first, um, I'd like to say a big shout out to the producer, Benny McCulley. Mm -hmm. um, he just played me the instrumental. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're just having fun in the studio. And um, when I heard the beat, the first thing that came to my head is, my project, the kind of things I do. And at that time, um, there were crises all over the world. You know, we had the missing uh, Malaysian flights. We had issues in Baga. Uh, we had issues in Israel. We had issues in Iraq, back here in Nigeria, up north. You know, um, we have um, issues as well. So I just felt like, okay, this is not just about Nigeria. It's like there is crisis all over the world. Lord have mercy you know, on your children. And um, I brought in Clay, who happens to be a rapper on the song as well. Mm -hmm. And when Clay heard um, the concept of the song, he was like, wow, okay, I think we should do this. You know, so, um, and the best way to interpret the song, we didn't want to do the regular video. So we spoke to Clarence Peters and he was like, okay, you know what? Let's do it the way it should be done. We'll construct a refugee camp mm -hmm. and get all the cast and everybody to be on set. And um, yeah, so. Well, th this is this is now. You remember in those days of yeah. the first thing that the world ever heard when celebrities got together to do something was "We Are the World." You know, yeah. when all celebrities had to use yeah. their voices. Mm -hmm. And um, was that is that is that in your head as you try to do the things that you do? Because the first time I met you was because of the work you're doing with prisoners, and I found yeah. it quite interesting. Um, the truth is, I never even thought about it from that angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just a regular boy. Yeah, um, back then, when this whole project thing started in 2009. That's you with some of the waters. You know, yeah. What was happening here? Tell me, I need to... Okay, okay that's me with the Controller General of Immigration, mm -hmm. um, Madam Rose, I call her Madam Rose, mm -hmm. <laughs> but she's retired now, though. Mm -hmm. um, this was when um, my project was being endorsed, you know, by the immigration, yeah. Tell us what you call the project. So I, I okay, it's Say No to Crime. You know, it's a, um, I introduced music as a therapy into the prison system mm -hmm. in Nigeria, whereby for the first time in the history of Africa, musical concerts are allowed in prison, yeah? And um, different ministries decided to partner with me. So at this point, you know, the immigration were also, you know, putting their hands up to say, mm -hmm. we love what you're doing. That guy's tall, though. Yeah, that's the controller oh, general. Short, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's the controller general of prisons. Um, Olushala Ogundipe, retired mm -hmm. as well right now. Mm -hmm. um, this was when I got my honorary appointment, you know, as a prison's national ambassador, and also which, it grew later into me becoming a prison's officer. So tell me, what did those prisoners say? I mean, the first time you went into prison, yeah. what was it like to go perform for them? Okay, I was scared initially because of, you know, my idea about prisons. You know, I've never been to any before. But when I got there, I re then I used to have my gold hair when I started. You know, I had this blonde hair. I love my blings and all. So when I got into the prison, it's one, one guy, he said it in Yoruba. Ah, my boy, he's shot. Ah, uh, he down more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was just all he said. Like, you know, and for me, that was interesting because I'm like, okay, I'm catching their attention. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, before you know what's happening, I came around, they came out in bashes from their cells. I'm like, I want to come up and put up a concert for y'all. Like, and they're like, wow, okay. I'm like, who do you want to see? Which musician do you want to see? Some of them said my Karemu, some said Samuel Bosu. You know, they were just giving me different names. Some that, said, is that one of the outreaches? Okay, this is one of my, um, um, my concerts in prison. Right there is Kafi dancing, mm -hmm. Karen Ego, Derele, Jafestra. Mm -hmm. You know, just entertaining inmates. Mm -hmm. um, this particular day is the day, um, thank you, thanks to God though, this was a particular day I was able to get freedom you know, for 32 helpless inmates, Absolutely. you know, um, lying in prison and nobody coming to, to help them out. Yeah, so 
this was my own way of celebrating them because I didn't just want to release them and just let them go into the society. I wanted to boost them up psychologically. How did you get them freed? Okay, now, um, now in prisons, we have minor offenders and we have capital offenders. Um, my attention was brought to minor offenders, people arrested for street trade offense, people arrested for environmental sanitation offense. And for me, I felt like they don't deserve to be in a federal prison. You know, because these are minor offenders. Federal prison, like Kirikiri, for instance, is where we have capital offenders. Now, when you pick up a boy that is trying to survive on the street, I'm not saying break the law, but he's also trying to survive. Mm -hmm. Now, that's street trade offense. You don't put them in capital prisons where we have major criminals. Mm -hmm. Now, my fear was three months is enough time to mm -hmm. transform that little boy that is selling gala or pure water mm -hmm. into a major criminal. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, I spoke with the controller general of prison at that time. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm, I'm about going a little bit above me just performing, you know, for this email, but it's not just about music for me now. It's about making sure that people that don't deserve to be in prison are no longer in prison. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the go ahead. He was like, okay, just do what you have to do. So I went to the records and I'm like, okay, can I have the list of people that are in prison based on minor offense. And I started saying street trade offense, environmental sanitation offense, and all that. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I called my lawyer. At that point, I didn't even remember I was a musician. <laughs> yeah, I was so passionate. I started going from one court to another. I went to Kai court. I went to different places. Now, I'm going to use this opportunity to address an issue which I've been talking about for, for a while now. Kai is a state security agency. They are doing a very great job by clearing people off the street. But I think Kai should have a remand home where such people are being taken to, and while they are there for three months, the government decides what they are gonna do with those people. Mm -hmm. But when you pick such people because they cannot pay their fine, you send them to Kirikiri. They get worse, right? Of course. So how did those guys feel? Did they, I mean, they were all boys. Yeah, young men. they didn't even know I was- uh, Doing that for they them. They didn't even know I was doing anything for them. I went to their profile, I got their names, and I started going to different courts. I went to a job court, Igbo Shere, mm -hmm. Kai court. Like, and after got to, getting all their um, documentation for them to be um, free out of jail, mm -hmm. you know, then they, I met with the state um, controller of prisons, you know, and I said, can you give me a date? I would like to celebrate these boys. So from Badagri prison, I had um, 10 boys. From Kirikiri, I had um, about, what, they about, I think they were 12. Yeah, then from Ikoi was another 10. You Are know, you so, in touch with them? Huh? Are you in touch with them? Yeah, some of them are, like, not all of them, mm -hmm. though, but some, two of them are in UK right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, they're doing well. Mm -hmm. um, some of them I've tried to empower. There's even a particular one that is on my case, seriously. You know, he said he wants to go into trading, like selling, buying now, and selling and all that. Does that bother you, that you have yeah. to not take, take responsibility for them? But I must, take a, I must take a break so that I can talk to the <laughs> other celebrities. But I must no tell problem. my viewers that it was Niger Sings that got you. Wasn't it Niger Sings? No, Which one no, was no. it? I never went to any of the reality shows. I was just a musician doing my thing. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought you were one of these reality show products. No. I only started coming up on reality shows to speak to contest, um, contestants mm -hmm. when um, NDLA appointed me as the ambassador. So most times they bring me on set to just talk about drug abuse and all of that. Yeah, Tell me, well. were you ever a criminal or you saw somebody was a criminal? No, that's Why a funny thing. <laughs> I've never, I've never, do you know, I've never, even, I've never fought in my life. I've never hit anyone with my hand, never. But I think it's just something God just laid in my heart. And um, the way I run with it, it tells me that it's just God. Thank you very much. I'll take a Thank break so much. I can return with my next guest on the show. No problem. But don't go away because you're going to perform that song and you're still going to talk to us about responsibilities, how we can take our responsibility one step further. No problem. Thank you, Yinka Lawan. Thank you for having me. Yes, we're back on set on Seriously Speaking, and my next guest is a beautiful woman, no doubt, but she's beyond beauty, not only brains, but she has a cause to her name. I'm going to read her bio first. That's why I have these glasses on, by the way, so that I can let her walk on set to meet you tonight. Her name is Omoumi Akinifesi. She's a Nigerian businesswoman and environmental ambassador for Lagos State. In 2005, then 18, Omoumi was crowned the most beautiful girl in Nigeria and went ahead to get three more crowns, Miss Tourism International and Miss Bikini International. She also represented Nigeria at the Miss World pageant in China that same year all in 2005. In 2008, Omoumi graduated from the University of Lagos with a degree in geography and regional planning. Thereafter, she obtained a master's degree in environmental monitoring, modeling, and management from King's College, London. She was the first runner-up on the Nigerian version of the Nigerian of Strictly Come Dancing and Celebrity Takes Two Dance Competition. 
And shortly after, she established her own public relations and ushering service known as AL Poise. It's my pleasure to welcome the woman of Poise, celebrity with a cause, Miss Omowumi Akini Fesi. I had to make you walk on set so because most cats walk. Yeah, show me those steps. All right now, all right now. It's nice to have you. Nice to have you. I'm very glad to have you here. Thank you for because, having me. Because I mean, you're one of those beauty queens. You know, there are beauty queens that get the crown and they disappear into oblivion. Mm -hmm. There are beauty queens that get the crown and make something out of it. When you went to run for Most Beautiful Girl in Nigeria, what was in your head? Were you I just thinking of things to... like this today? No, I just wanted to have fun. Oh, really? Oh, yes, that was it. I just wanted to have fun. I wanted to, um, I was at the University of Lagos at the time, and um, the school went on strike. Mm -hmm. And so I had nothing to do. And some friends of mine said, oh, why don't you do MBG? And I'm, okay, just fun. I didn't think I was going to win. I just wanted to have a good time. And, and then happened. you got the crown. When I got the crown, um, I, it was very shocking, first of all, and people around me do not even believe it. Um, uh, but I was happy about it, and I was honored and humbled to have won that. Did you think about what you could do with it, though? I did. Um, well, at first, I didn't, to be honest. To be honest. And then when, it, when, when um, I had the opportunity, and then I started thinking, what can I even do with this? What would I like to do with this? And... Um, and, you know, when you're in that position, so many things happen and you enjoy it happening and you tell yourself as along the way, you start realizing the kind of responsibility you have mm -hmm. and you just take advantage of it. Tell me, at what point did it dawn on you? Because, I mean, there'll be parties, there'll be all kinds of opportunities to meet important people. Mm -hmm. At what point did it dawn on you that this is a responsibility? I must do something with it. Um, when did it dawn on me? It wasn't really about the people. Did anything happen to you to make you now say, look, I must do something? Oh, yes. Well, this might sound very small, but um, I had won two weeks before it was aired on TV. And when they aired, the day it was aired on TV, um, people started calling. And my phone would not stop ringing, literally one call after the other and I was at home with my sister and we just started crying <laughs> <laughs> because we were what's it you know I mean you know yeah, phones no had just a mommy. Mommy. it just people were calling from Singapore people were calling from the states people were calling from UK old friends different media houses were just calling my phone and this was about 10 11 o'clock at night you know, so it wasn't, it was new to me. Phones had just come out and we, it was just still new receiving calls. And then after winning and receiving so many calls, it was, it was, it was. You were no longer just a moment. I was no longer just a moment. That was the minute I knew that, okay, this is more than I you? thought. It scared the hell out of me. It scared me and not only me, it scared my sister. That would tell you how She's the closest person was. to you? Or yes. Okay. You know, and we just, we were just there crying like, what is the ringing and she'll pick up and like, oh, can I speak to her about me? Oh, congratulations, da, da, da. Some people say, use it well. Some people say, did you use what well? I didn't go in to use anything. I just went in to have fun and fulfill a dream. And, you know, so it wasn't like I went in for a purpose or I want to be popular, I want to be famous. No. And I've always had that thing of adding value to wherever I am. In university, in secondary school, I was a prefect. So it wasn't about that. Mm -hmm. I was going to do that anyway, regardless of becoming a beauty queen or not. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was, okay, achieving this dream of, you know, walking on stage is something you have seen. Because mm -hmm. I always saw the vision, even before you I decided it. to go in mm -hmm. for it. So. No, but how did the environment, being the ambassador of environment, we'd seen you with the deputy governor of Lagos State earlier on. How did that happen? Um, well, um, I, I studied geography and regional planning. Oh, okay. And um, I won the Miss Tourism International. And so these two things kind of brought me into the environmental sector. I had traveled to different countries, witnessed the way they um, approach tourism. And with my background in geography, um, in settlements and in um, urban planning, and you know rocks and tourism and all of that emerged my um, ability to be able to partake in environmental issues and matters. Mm -hmm. So um, I had met with um, 
the Commissioner for Environment at the time. And then I said, oh, why don't you have environmental ambassadors? Why don't you do this for the environment? Why don't you do this for another? And I said, oh, OK, that's a good idea. So it was okay. your idea. It was my idea. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's a good one. OK, fine, no problem. And I just wanted to add value, as usual. And then he said to me, when we were planning, okay, the list of environmental ambassadors, people that have added value in some other way, we can use them to add value to the environment. And so why to don't push you, the cause. As, exactly. Why don't you, I said, me, you know, okay, I can, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And then you, it became more than I even expected because, you know, it's one thing to have the passion for it. It's another thing to just have it. Um, so what does being an you. ambassador mean? How, what have you done um, with it? Being an environmental ambassador is you about... certainly won't catch you throwing trash from your car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, never. It's, um, it's about, um, you know, because at that time, um, the Minister of Environment was doing a lot for the environment. They were doing this climate change. Um, they were doing climate change, um, tree planting, going green, and we needed to bring it out. We needed to let people know that this is what was happening. And so I partook in that. And also, you know, I also got um, about 2,500 youth to sign up saying that on January, every July 14th, because that is um, tree planting day in Lagos State, every July 14th, people will come out and plant trees. 2,500? Oh, yes. And, and so after that, um, after that was 2009, 10, and then I thought, you know what, okay, I've, I've, I've done the things about the campaign, and then I wanted to know more about the technical side of environment. Went to and school. so I decided to go for my master's. Mm -hmm. So I decided to learn more about GIS, I decided to learn more about remote sensing, and all these things that are more technical, mm -hmm. software based. What did you want to do with it? I wanted to, um, first of all, it was just the interest of learning, okay, what can so I I'm do? So I'm dumb when they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's not just about the campaign side mm -hmm. and the, you know, the coming out side of it, the PR side of What's it. It's more. Here? Um, I was asked when I was being given the an environmental ambassador badge and um, plaque. And so um, it's, you know, GI, pollution management, waste management, manage space management, and all of that. So you wanted planning. to have that knowledge. So I that wanted to have you, that knowledge. You were together all the yes. way. Yes. So I'll take a break. I mean, I can talk to you forever. You know, I like I know. girls, girls. <laughs> <laughs> but I must bring my next guest before we go to sure. engage ourselves on the panel. Mm -hmm. And this time on the panel, I'm not having my table because I want that my first guest to perform here on set. So I'll excuse Omo Umi okay. and uh, we'll take a break and I'll return with the last person we're going to engage on the show today. Yes, welcome back. My next guest is somebody who's used to sets. And if you see him on television or see him live on stage or in TV commercials in recent times, you're going to think, ah, this boy just fine. But he's beyond fine because he's a lawyer by profession and he's a young man who I first saw in the house of, uh, what was that, Big Brother. In those days when I used to watch Big Brother. Now, the shower room seasons are too long. I'm shy. But it's my pleasure to have Ob, Ob, uh, uh, hey, Ebuka Obi. <laughs> Change. It's the Obi that threw me off balance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I like the, because why did I start adding the Obi to it? That is said you must put Obi. It's always been there, actually. So people just never really took notice of it. Oh, really? I've always had a compound surname, yeah. But that's your father's name, isn't Yeah, my it? father is Obi. Then my surname, it's the Uchind. family name is Uchendo. So it's, it's Obi Uchendo. Obi, Ebuka Uchendo. Yeah. Well, Obi Uchendo. It's We're nice to, to have that's, you That's the whole idea. So that we can, it's always a conversation starter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Was television a natural for you? Not at all. Um, I was. I grew up very painfully shy as a child. Yeah, I had no. How did I shine this exhibit? Were you hiding in corners? And... Yes, I used to hide in corners. Visitors would come to the house or run into the room. My brother was the one who would run out to say hi. I was. My mom was tired of me. Like I was terrible, and I knew I liked the media because I loved television a lot mm -hmm. and radio. But I always thought it would be radio I was going to do at some point, even if. I did anything at all in the media because I mean I would, I would be faceless and I would just be speaking and then so TV just happened mm -hmm. after the reality show. He, so he, why did you go for that show? I mean I never asked you did I? Two things. Um, to break the shyness? No, not at all. One it was a dare from my sister because she knew I was very shy and we had seen the adverts in the papers and she's like hey Buka go now you can't even and I just wanted to prove her wrong. You know, and um, they ended up picking me for some reason. <laughs> and secondly, I think $100,000 at the time was a l I was, was like, no, let's see if we can maybe just get this. Mm, but you didn't so get it. So the money was a huge factor. I didn't think I was going to go into entertainment after doing it. I was going to do it if I won, great. If I didn't win, 
go back to my law practice. Mm -hmm. And then... You had already graduated by that time. I'd, I was done with law school. I was done mm -hmm. with everything, actually. So it was a window where I was trying to get a job, mm -hmm. you know, not sure what I was going to do next. Mm -hmm. And then Big Brother happened, and I went on... And auditions started coming, and I decided to go for them, and it just happened. Tell me about Robin Mines. Robin Mines is, it, it, I mean... Well, auditions started coming, started doing that, and the yeah. grabbed you. But Robin Mines seems to be a, a very serious one for you, yeah. helping the youths to come together and, you know. Yeah, it's, it's the one show that I have, the type of show I've always wanted to do. Um, it's live, first of all. So the, everything is, what you see is what you get. Honestly. And I've always wanted to do a live show. First few months I did it, I was scared <laughs> out of my pants basically mm -hmm. because you don't know what the reaction is going to be there's no live audience so you have to wait for the reaction when you're done with the show um i like it because i, I, I i'm extremely passionate about nigeria i don't know why um, you're nigerian come on yeah there's a lot of people who are not <laughs> yes and don't see why you should be mm -hmm. when i went to do my masters in 2010 in america a lot of people thought i was going to come i was not going to come I, back i thought so too people who when i came back people were like why did you come back you know i'm like why would i not come back so i have always wanted to do things along those lines where I talked seriously about Nigeria, politics, lifestyle, whatever it was. And Robin Minds gave me that platform. I've been okay. doing it for two years now and I don't regret any minute of it. Did you enjoy the, that, that youth debate that you did four years ago? You Extremely. know, the presidential one. Now, that, that was the one, <laughs> I don't know how well, I did it. almost four years ago now. Yeah, it's about, yeah. Over, about four years ago now. Yeah, um, it was uh, enough is enough was Nigeria. Live. It was live as well. It was with Chimamanda. Mm. Enough is enough Nigeria decided to do a youth-based uh, presidential debate. And I said, hey, would you like to do this? I said yes, of course, but I think I spent the next month praying every morning <laughs> that I don't screw it up. Because, I mean, I knew everybody was going to be watching on the, mm -hmm. in the country, and it was a big deal at the time. Politics was hot in the air. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, unfortunately, I don't think debates are happening this time for some reason from both candidates. Well, I, I don't know what things happened. Are, but... Things are very hot this time yeah. or something. But, I, I mean, let me see. So let me tell you how they described you here. It said yeah. Ibuka is the conversation driver for young people nationally, an effective face and voice of the same, because you're very active on Twitter. We see you posting one thing or the other every day. It's like you have this desire to help them to understand what their responsibilities are. Do you see that as a personal responsibility of yours? That's the good thing is that I don't see it as a responsibility. It's just what I think I should be doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that I necessarily do it for anyone. You know what I mean? I'm just doing it. Um, like I said earlier, Nigeria is, is a place I, I think very seriously about. A lot of things that happen, like I'm sure you as well, you find very, very disturbing because we love our country and there are certain things we want to see happening differently. Mm -hmm. So um, if you follow my social media life generally, you would find that if I do 10 tweets, for example, nine are mostly positive or just not necessarily negative things. I don't like to highlight the negative a little too much. And um, so I try to put that in, con uh, in the picture. And also most importantly, letting young people understand that, yeah, it's good to, I mean, I like to look nice. I go to events a lot. I attend red carpet events. Uh -huh. I like to dance. Uh -huh. I go to parties. I go clubbing. But in, in all of that, I also think it's important that people see this side of you that is also serious. This most is people... you wearing, <laughs> what happened here? It was a photo shoot for a magazine. Oh, wow. Uh -uh. Yeah, they Do you have any Yoruba to... blood in you by any chance? Atolo. Atolo. Uh -uh. <laughs> you could pass for one Yoruba I know. If, are you actually you look like JK or do you look like uh, Banekoro's son or somebody <laughs> in that photo? You look like a politician. I'm tapping it, I was tapping will into my political will side. Will you ever do politics? Yes, I will. Oh, you will? Yes. I don't That's know nice what capacity. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be elective. I don't know what it is, but I know I will. I swore I was going to join a political party this year. Mm -hmm. I probably still will. It's almost too late, isn't it? No, it's... Okay, after this election. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I probably will join. I, I, the problem is, I don't know what, what ideological basis I would be joining on, which is why I still haven't, haven't joined one yet. Mm -hmm. But it's something I know I definitely would do. And I think everybody should. Everybody should. I mean, I lived in America for a whole year doing my, my, uh, my master's. What did you miss most about home? And... <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss most about Eba. home? Not really. I think it's just the camaraderie you find here. It's, it's, it's unrivaled anywhere else where people are just a lot more open mm. as against what you find there where everybody, it's, everybody's individual, an individual there and you have to make an effort to make friends. So while you were there, you were natural. saying? Yeah. Like, well, while you were in America? Yeah, yeah, when I was in America, I mean, a lot of people in my class, these are people in their 20s, early 20s and mid-20s, they were all either Democrat or Republican and they were proud of it. You know, they, were, they would have open conversations about their politics and about their beliefs. 
But back here, it's almost a thing of shame for young people to say, oh, I'm, a, I'm in PDP, I'm in APC. They instantly think you've been paid or for Kowa. it. Or COA. Or <laughs> COA. <laughs> they instantly think you've been paid for it, you know. So it would be nice to, for people to start understanding. Maybe the parties also have a duty to start defining themselves better so that people align themselves even better. So I, I, I'd like to see in Nigeria where younger people are more active in partisan politics. Nobody's saying you should run for elective office, but at least have a stand and, you know, stick to it. Look, I'm surprised that, you know, one of the celebrities who's you know, campaigning on one side or the other this time? Well, that's mostly because of the job I do. Robin Minds is the platform where I get to interview any and you everybody. Have to, you have and, to be um, neutral. I mean, I've interviewed people from both parties, and it would be, I don't think it would be right for me to be in one party and get the other party's candidate to come on. Of course, inside, they think there's bias. Okay, I'll take a break. And this break is to allow me to go and let's discuss that. Because, I, I mean, I want to be able to take on the issues of how can we take the responsibility of having people make the decisions they're going to make and know that even when they're going to vote, it's important to. You know, very because good. I believe it's very important. Uh, take a break and we'll be back to engage them on the panel, like I told you, without my beautiful table. This time, I want Lamborghini to do one song for me, one of his regular songs, not the broken one, before we leave here today. So we'll be back in a short while. Yes. Maybe I have to call you back. Let me call Patient to recharge. Patient, your phone is Patient. Who is this? Um, um, good evening, sir. I mean, good morning. What do you want? I beg, I won't buy credit. Tell me the money, they come and say, I won't buy credit. Give me your address. Okay, anyway, give, give me your address, we can bring the credit for you. You don't know buy the credit again? Give me your address now. Getting credit shouldn't be too much trouble. That's why we've got eTopUp. With your mobile phone or computer, you can use eTopUp to get airtime instantly, anytime, anywhere. You can also use eTopUp on POS terminals, ATM, vendors outlets, or any Atisalat experience center nationwide. Get 10% extra airtime every time you recharge with eTopUp. So, recharge your line with eTopUp from Atisalat. I say the way of eTopUp, Abi. Oswo. Somewhere in the project, I'll show you. Ross, my credit don't finish. Etisalat, now you're talking. Yes, my guests are still in the house. They are celebrities. I call them celebrities, but celebrities are the difference, not just good looking for, for no reason or talented for no reason. They're talented and they're making their voices heard. And I'm wondering now, Ebuka says he does not have PVC. Do you have your PVC? I do. Do you have your PVC? Not yet. Not you too. <laughs> not yet. Why? Well, I tried four times and. Um, First, the first time I went the queue was something else. I was under the sun, and um, under the sun. So um, Nigerians uh, are always under the sun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Nigerian. Yeah. <laughs> not Nigerian son. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not going to vote. Well, I want to believe they'll give opportunity again. Then I'll go and try one more time. It's too late, round the corner. Yeah. So I, I just wondered, though, why, why were you, were you not amongst one of those? that supported a particular party and came out, would, you, would, that, would, that be, would that have been difficult for you? Well, I wouldn't say Publicly. I wasn't. <clears throat> I wouldn't say I wasn't invited to, but I just wanted to um, do it as an individual, not coming out to say I'm supporting this or I'm supporting that. Why? Because I believe I have a very strong voice and if I wear this today, for example, people will wear it tomorrow. So that's the same way what I do translates into what people do. So I have to be careful. If I say I'm voting this person, everybody will go vote that person. But that's why they're saying that anyway. No, but mm. why won't I say vote? Think about who you think will work, who will do the job, not because I am saying it, because you feel the person would do it. But do you say anything wrong with that, the way Bukhe? Not at all, actually. I actually... Because I, if you're I in actually, a party, I'm for example... For, yeah, mm -hmm. I actually think we should... I understand your point. Yeah. I understand the fears with Nigeria because okay. there's all of these backstories that come up with people they supporting candidates. They oh, paid yeah. you. Oh, you don't oh, really exactly. believe in what so they are. Exactly. So your credibility then, starts. Yeah, but then again, I also believe. I also think we should start getting to a point where you are able to support a candidate mm -hmm. and talk about it and not be scared of it. I mean, we saw it across board. I know America is not a very good example because mm -hmm. they are way ahead of us with democracy. But it happens there where celebrities wear T-shirts of Obama mm -hmm. through the campaigns and tell you, I am voting sure. him and this is why I want you to vote him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I think this is the one election where we've had most people on the fence the most. Oh, yes. People not knowing that's who it. to vote. That's mm -hmm. it. That's if true. things like that have started happening where people you look up to give you reasons why, because not everybody can access these candidates. Mm -hmm. So that's if true. someone you look up to tells you, okay, this is what I've seen or this is what I've heard from him and this is why I think you should vote him. I think it will be a difference. So yes. could it also be, for example, I'm, wa I'm wondering, I'm, you're not even going to vote, but however, <laughs> you know, could it be because, because celebrities are scared that 
they would say you've taken money. Yes. Yeah, it could, it could be part of it. And um, the truth is, most of the celebrities out there supporting one party or the other, really, really, if they didn't get paid, is that the party they'll actually be supporting? We can't tell because yeah, we're not talking you to understand. them. understand, exactly. Because I, so. I mean, I haven't even got that too. Because I interviewed the president recently and everybody like, oh, they've paid her, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. nobody knows who I'm going to vote for. That's the good thing about yeah, it. Exactly. I understand about what the whole is saying. You mm -hmm. have to be very careful. Yeah. You just have to be careful. Which side you say, okay, go and do this. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is just go there and vote. Just go there and vote. But are, are you not surprised that we don't have real examples? We don't have, you know, making a choice is, doesn't seem to be easy. Well, yes, true, true. Well, I'm not even saying that, okay, maybe... I, I, there are parties that I support. I don't mind coming out to support someone. But it's just this period, it's, um, you know, everyone, <laughs> you just have to... Because it, the controversy is there. So one has to be careful what you I think, portray outside. Yeah, I think um, it, we need to... There are certain celebrities who I think we need to start doing these things mm -hmm. for it to become a little more genuine. Mm -hmm. um, in 2011, there was a movement called RSVP. I don't know if you heard of it. Register, select, select vote, vote, and, and protect, protect your absolutely. vote. Mm -hmm. Now, there were certain celebrities at the time who were strongly for that. I think it was mm -hmm. Banky W, Sasha, LD. These are people who have some sort of following slash credibility with their fans. And people knew they were doing this because they really, really cared about Nigeria and the elections. People along those lines, when they come out and say, okay, this is why I'm voting this person, and you don't just see them playing at the, the person's campaigns, which is what you get most times. Okay, I do a TV jingle for you and I dance on TV, or you have a concert or a campaign in, I don't know, Sokoto, and I come and perform. That's not necessarily the sort of endorsements we want to be seeing. We want to see you do a town hall meeting and you come and tell me why you're supporting this guy. Mm -hmm. So until we get there, we'll have celebrities telling us why they're backing them as against just associating, mm -hmm. then I think we sure. really haven't gone that there. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I'm wondering though, as people are going out to vote on the 28th and on the 11th, yeah. it seems to me that everybody believes that the 28th is what is most critical. <laughs> That's the presidential? Yeah, That's the presidential. I mean, and the national, the federal election. Yes, elections, is that yeah. the most critical? I mean, you uh, as at, the, at the end of the day, it is actually because that's the first point. <laughs> really? Yeah. So in all those times you were dealing with, I mean, I, I'm looking at you, for example, okay. who's dealt with people in, in jail, okay. in prison. What has the president got to do with what's put them there? Okay, he's got everything to do with it. Like, as I'm sitting here, there are so many ideas in my head that I would have loved to, like, put in, into the prison system here in Nigeria. Have a town hall meeting. <laughs> now, I'll gladly you know. moderate. <laughs> yeah, you see. First and foremost, the I should give you the ushers. Oh. <laughs> so the event is already ready. ready. First and foremost, the fact that I could even come this far. Yeah, I remember the first time I walked into the controller general's office. He looked at me and he was like, I have to be there so I can really back this up in front of the authorities. Now, you know what that means, quote unquote. He came and he saw what I was doing. And he went back and he was like, okay, you know, you have my backing. More now, there are limits. If you leave me, I will build a music therapy room in every prison in Nigeria. Do you see the effect? I mean, how, how effective has been what you've been doing? It's so effective. Testimonies. First and foremost, I mix the musicians up. I bring secular guys, I bring gospel guys, and I always have the likes of Fela Drotoe on the standby. Motivational speakers. Yeah, Mr. Uncle Fela is always there for me. Like, while they perform and all that, he just comes in between, he gives the word, and it pulls back, then the entertainment continues. I've had several testimonies. My biggest fans are prisoners. Like, I can't even count. Well, they can't buy your record now, so there's no money inside. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, yeah, they can't buy my record, mm -hmm. but it gives me joy that I came into this world and I was able to impact into people's life that they don't know where I live, they don't know me before, I don't know them before, but I went... When a man is in prison, that's like his darkest moment. What joy can you give to someone in prison? So, for me... I'm just doing I what... To, I honestly have to... When I was listening to him when you were interviewing him, yes. and I have to commend what he's doing. I mean, it's, I think it's great mm -hmm. what he did, getting people free. And, you know, it's something I think I would actually even like to partner with because you hear a lot of those stories. I've been to Kirikiri once, maximum prison. And I remember the first thing that caught my eye was looking at the board when you're entering Kirikiri. There's a board that says number of inmates yeah. and number of awaiting trials. Mm -hmm. The number of awaiting trials is about 75% of the prison population. As a lawyer, you, you meet people, you. Yeah, you meet people there who have been there for 17 years and are still on trial. You know, you hear stories like that. So, but I, I must go a little to the causes of those things. I don't know what you're doing, for example, or, you know, yeah. how do people end up in jail? Getting yeah. people not to even take up crime? Because, for example, <laughs> Some, when elections come, there will be a lot of... <laughs> the truth is that it, there's a lot of stories you hear about yeah. circumstantial evidence and people oh, yes. being in places at the wrong time. It happens a lot. Oh, yes. I've heard stories of people who were in the wrong bus. Mm -hmm. 
and they don't have anybody to bring bail money, something that simple. There's a lot of crazy stories you hear. If you go to prison, you hear a lot of crazy stories. There's a story about yeah. a, a, a young man, 17-year-old, um, that was in an, it was an unforeseen situation. He was caught with his friends, mm -hmm. and apparently his friend had stolen. So they didn't take the friend, they took him, and they, they took him while the parents were not around, and until today they can't find him. And the parents went to the jail, they paid 160,000 naira for his bail, but, and the policemen collected the money, but they still, they didn't, still release didn't release him. And then the, one of the policemen told him, told the parent that you might not see your son again. So they're not even sure if the son is there. there. So these are the situations like that me, happen. Like I've, I've had experiences, like I've met people in prison for as small as Maggie. I've, like, like Maggie, like well, fight, you know, like, you know, just quarrel, you know, neighbor, neighbor quarrel, mm -hmm. and this other neighbor feels like, you know what, I, I know the police officer that can arrest you, they pick you up, before you know what's happening, the moment you stand in front of the judge, or the moment they take you to court. You can't afford the lawyer. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's too many things. It's, so back to the question you were asking about the importance also, of the elections. Yes, yeah. back to the leadership, yeah. thank you. Because yeah. it's, mm -hmm. as much as we want to say, okay, we need the leadership that is closer to us to be the most important, mm -hmm. Nigeria still, is still, as much as we're a federal government, the center is too strong. Yeah. And a lot of these policies are going to come from the federal government, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not. And the, the election on the 28th is the president and the exactly. Senate and the House of Assembly, exactly. or House of National Representatives. Office. Those are people who are going to exactly. make these policies that would affect everybody. I, I think, so until we exactly. decentralize the federal government, sure. I think that's going to be the most important. The point is, if we have a central that is so, because that's why we are also concerned, you, you bet you, everybody is going to vote for that national, then the rest will drink pepper soup on the yeah. level. As well, as well as always happened. You know? That's what always happens. The so turnout I mean, for the state has always been so lower. I, I would sure. think that we should be looking at which government, which person is promising us a better deal with our constitution. Yes. Shouldn't that be? One party yeah. actually is. So it's, it's so, left no, for you I guys. I want to go and find out. Yeah. No, there is, there is a party manifesto that's talking a lot about decentralizing. That's the things. manifesto. Yeah. No, but not even the manifesto. One of the candidates is saying, promises mm -hmm. decentralizing the police, for example. Things like state police, you know, mm -hmm. giving more powers to the states. Mm -hmm. Allocation, this federal allocation of waiting every month until the money mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. and you know, stuff like that. So people should actually do their research, speaking, I think. Between you and I, between us here, until this person you're talking about gets into power. Yeah, but at least someone is saying it. So people so have, we should said, be, we, people we, have said things over and over again. Yeah, but I also believe that we're at a place now where we're, we're be a lot more able to actually hold these guys accountable now for a lot of these yeah, things that, than we were in 1999. Register, yeah. select, vote, vote, and protect. protect. That piece okay. is important. So how can we protect our votes? Quickly, from all of you, because I must, have, I must hear you sing. <laughs> how do we protect our votes? Well, you can protect your vote by, you know, not like making up your mind and just go with who you believe. That's the first way to protect. Don't be influenced. Like, I love what she said. She's just not necessarily going to come out and say, I'm doing this, then follow, follow, just everybody's following. Mm -hmm. Make up your mind. Who do you really want? That's how you can protect your How do you your make votes. up your mind? How do you make up your mind? I don't know, honestly. I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually relative to whoever it is. You have to decide what it is you're looking for in a candidate. There are people yeah. who want a fine boy. There are people who want someone. <laughs> it's true. There are people who want someone who's going to give their state more money. There are people yeah. who want uh, education is more important to them. Whoever is promising more on education. So it depends on what it is you're yeah. looking for, to be quite honest. Yeah. But with protecting, I think protection is actually the most important of the RSVP things we yeah. talked about. And it goes on for the four years. Um, I know social media is a place now where a lot of politicians are very wary about because there's no control. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll say youth, the youth should actually use it more responsibly yeah. as a way of protecting. Mm -hmm. You know, you've elected this person, mm -hmm. use that as a watchdog while the person is in office to make sure that he does what you promised to do. Mm -hmm. I think it starts for making the right choice, Abi. Yeah. I think we because... should go with your gut feeling mm -hmm. and not because of yam, not because of rice, <laughs> Not because of phones, it's hard, but because there's of all this. <laughs> Stomach infrastructure. No, but it's hard. if someone gives it to you, you can't take it because you're hungry. But then again, you, it's you, still, part have the of, you still have the choice. Yeah, you still true. have the power to decide with your gut because feeling who's going to do it. Because it's not as they're giving you the yam at... Anyway, at, I, you know, <laughs> I look at because, you. <laughs> because you must sing, I must round up. But I would say, though, it's about time that we began to at least look at the manifestos of these people. Yeah. Don't look at, you know, we are doing post-site elections these days. I like this guy, or I like what he says, or people are saying different things about different candidates. Why don't you look at the manifestos and say, okay, this is the party that is most likely to help us ensure that people like those that this man is fighting for will not be there. There's less crime and all of that. Yeah. So I must say goodbye to you officially, but I'm going to ask... Uh, Yinka Lawansin. He told me he's a Yoruba boy because he looks like an Igbo he's boy. Igbo. He no, so, to, no, so. To, so I'm going to ask him to round us off with a song and we'll yeah. see you again soon. 
So what are you going to do for us? Bust my brain. She's busting my brain right wow. now. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's busting I'm my guilty. brain right now. I'm guilty because I'm a bad person. <laughs> she's okay. busting my brain right me now. Okay, I'm going to jail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, this is my new single. Um, away from the regular Lamborghini charity guy, you know, my niggas want to turn up, you know, and uh, yeah. So bust my brain, you know. It's just I'm talking about a sexy girl wine for the rhythm, yeah. But uh, the reason why me I say she have bust my brain right now, you know. So you so. can take her to jail, and we'll bail her out. Oh. Bail her, the lawyer will bail her out. All right, come with the rhythm. Let's do this. She a wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, nonstop. She a wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, non stop. She a wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, non stop. She a wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, wine for the rhythm, non stop. She a boss me brain, Bobby wa boss me brain, Bobby wa boss me brain, she a boss me brain, Bobby wa boss me brain, Bobby wa boss me brain, she a boss me brain, Bobby wa boss me brain, Bobby wa boss me brain. Listen. She bad now, my baby, she a bad now. Whatever she wants, she a kill now. My baby, girl, she a bad now. Mm, she a bad now. My baby, girl, she a bad now. Whatever she wants, she a kill now. Yeah. Fantima, let me give you the key to my beamer. I love you, girl, and I want you to be my. Not Lamborghini. Hey, hey. Hey, you call up your free for when you smile, me go be a dimple. Fantasy, 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 fantasy. So we done fantasy. She a boss me brain, Bobby we boss me brain, Bobby we boss me brain. She a boss me brain, Bobby we boss me brain. Hey, thank you very much, but I'm a little boss me brain. Ah, me too. Boss me brain. Ah, uh, boss me brain. <laughs> Thank you.